On October 29, 2025, something extraordinary happened with 3i Atlas and every major space organization in the world, including NASA, completely missed it. 3i Atlas, which has the scientific world debating between an alien mothership or a comet, reached perihelion, diving to just 203 million kilometers from the sun. At that distance, the sun's gravity becomes a cosmic engine. A single burst of thrust at perihelion can completely rewrite a trajectory. It's how spacecraft accelerate, decelerate, or even pivot toward new worlds. This is also the moment when a mothership could release mini probes, using the sun's gravity to fling them outward, an idea explored by Harvard astrophysicist Avi Loeb, who wrote in his most recent article, an interstellar mothership could release many small probes during a close encounter with the sun. Now, here, one of the two sure-shot things that could happen. Possibility A, 3i Atlas continues along its current path without any surprises, behaving like a natural interstellar object, a space rock, or perhaps an unusually active comet from beyond our solar system. Possibility B, it could perform what's known as an Oberth maneuver, changing its trajectory by using the sun's gravity as a slingshot. If it applied a significant reverse thrust burn at perihelion, it could alter its course, even potentially redirect toward Earth. This would require an extremely powerful and precise reverse thrust, given the orbital geometry involved, but it is within the realm of possibility. If the first scenario plays out, and 3i Atlas behaves like a conventional interstellar visitor, then what we are witnessing is a familiar cosmic rhythm. The object, entering our solar system on a hyperbolic trajectory, would be a loose aggregate of rock and volatile ice, heated and fractured by the sun's radiation as it dives inward. Its brightness might rise as its surface boils off, venting jets of gas that push it minutely, like the gentle hiss of steam from a kettle. As the jets subside, it will recede back into the deep beyond, fainter each night, until it vanishes entirely. Such behavior would put 3i Atlas in the lineage of 1i Oumuamua and 2i Borisov, the two interstellar objects discovered before it, but with crucial differences. Astronomers estimate it to be hundreds of times more massive than Borisov, and perhaps millions of times more massive than Oumuamua, a leviathan by comparison. For months, telescopes have been tracking its motion, fitting data to models, and refining its path. Everything, so far, could still fit a natural explanation. If so, it would be another window into the chemistry of other planetary systems, a relic drifting between stars, carrying clues about how planets form and die. A natural interstellar comet is remarkable enough. It shows that the debris of alien worlds travels freely between suns, that fragments from distant origins can fall briefly into our view. But then there is the other possibility, the one that unsettles even seasoned astronomers. The idea that 3i Atlas might not be purely natural stems from more than imagination. As Avi Loeb has pointed out, its orbital orientation, nearly aligned with the ecliptic plane within a narrow 5-degree margin, is unusual for an interstellar intruder. Most objects arriving from outside the solar system approach from random inclinations, not from the thin disk where planets orbit. That alignment, while not impossible, suggests either coincidence or something deliberate about its path. At perihelion, it was perfectly placed to exploit what physicists call the Oberth effect. This principle, well known to spacecraft engineers, means that a burst of propulsion deep inside a gravitational well produces far greater change in velocity than the same burn performed farther away. A spacecraft could, in effect, use the sun itself as an amplifier, diving close, firing its engines at the point of maximum speed, and escaping with an enormous boost. For a comet, this moment is just physics playing out. For a vehicle, it's strategy. If 3i Atlas possessed any kind of internal propulsion, chemical, nuclear, or something we can't yet imagine, perihelion would be the time to use it. A single controlled thrust could redirect its outbound trajectory by millions of kilometers. In an extreme case, the object could even reverse course, bending its path back inward. From Earth, hidden behind the sun's glare, we would not be able to see that maneuver happen. 
for several critical days, it is literally invisible to all our major observatories. That window of invisibility is precisely what unsettles theorists like Loeb. He notes that if an interstellar craft wished to alter its orbit undetected, the period around perihelion, when it is too close to the Sun for telescopes to track, would be ideal. Only after it emerges again, weeks later, will astronomers be able to compare its actual path to predicted models and see whether anything changed. If nothing has changed, the story ends quietly. If the trajectory shifts, even slightly, the questions multiply. Suppose the object were to adjust its course toward the inner solar system, perhaps toward Earth's orbital neighborhood. Even a fractional deviation could transform into a planetary encounter months later. And because 3I Atlas is so large, its kinetic energy at impact would be staggering. Estimates place its mass at levels that, if traveling at typical interstellar speeds, could release energies far exceeding the largest nuclear arsenal on Earth combined. A collision would, in short, be catastrophic. Depending on the angle and composition, it could excavate a crater hundreds of kilometers wide, darken skies for months, or trigger global climatic collapse. But the most chilling aspect isn't the scale of destruction, it's the possibility that we might not even see it coming in time. As Loeb and other astronomers emphasize, 3I Atlas's perihelion geometry leaves Earth's instruments effectively blind at the most crucial moment. Ground-based telescopes cannot peer through the solar glare, and radar cannot reach it at that distance. Only a space-based observatory positioned elsewhere in the solar system, such as near Mars or out at one of the Sun-Earth Lagrange points, could keep continuous watch. We have no such dedicated system for this purpose. That means any sudden trajectory change, natural or otherwise, would go unnoticed until the object re-emerges from behind the Sun. By then, days or weeks could have passed. For an object moving tens of kilometers per second, that delay could mean millions of kilometers of untracked travel. NASA's Planetary Defense Coordination Office, in such a scenario, would immediately convene its rapid response teams. Observatories across the world would scramble to reacquire the target, refine its orbit, and calculate potential impact probabilities. The agency would likely issue preliminary risk bulletins to international partners and initiate simulation protocols, what Loeb calls the acid test of our readiness for interstellar surprises. Meanwhile, China's National Space Administration, which has been expanding its deep space observation network, would likely launch parallel tracking campaigns. Their radar arrays and optical telescopes could supplement data from the West, though political factors might limit information sharing. In a best-case scenario, international cooperation would mirror that of past planetary defense exercises, with NASA, the European Space Agency, and CNSA pooling resources. In a worst case, if any anomaly suggested artificial control, the event could rapidly shift from scientific inquiry to national security. If the trajectory indeed pointed toward Earth, the next question would be, what could humanity do? The answer today is sobering. Our current deflection capabilities depend on early detection, years or decades of warning. Missions like DART, which successfully nudged an asteroid in 2022, demonstrated that a kinetic impactor can alter an orbit slightly, given time. But 3I Atlas, moving at perhaps 60 kilometers per second and potentially already close, offers no such luxury. There would be no realistic way to launch, intercept, and meaningfully deflect a body of that mass on short notice. Nuclear options, while theoretically potent, remain untested and politically fraught. The more advanced alternative, if this were an artificial object, would be communication. Loeb has argued that if we ever confirm an interstellar probe, the first imperative should be to listen before acting. Radio telescopes would sweep the object's predicted position for signals, searching across wide frequency bands for any sign of modulation or information. Even a faint whisper of artificial origin would redefine the encounter from existential threat to epical contact. And yet, silence could be worse. Suppose it remains mute, giving no signal, yet behaves in a way that defies natural physics. 
a turn too sharp, an acceleration unexplainable by outgassing, a cluster of smaller returns on radar that could hint at deployed fragments. At that point, the distinction between comet and craft blurs into uncertainty. Humanity would face the dilemma of interpreting intent from motion alone. Loeb has framed this moment as a test not only of our instruments, but of our imagination. In his view, we have been conditioned to dismiss anomalies that do not fit existing models, to explain them away rather than confront their implications. Umuamua, with its non-gravitational acceleration and pancake-like shape, was initially rationalized as ice or dust. Only later did calculations show those explanations failed. If 3i Atlas repeats that pattern, if it does something unexpected and we again refuse to look deeper, then the real failure would be intellectual, not technological. The coming months will reveal much. As 3i Atlas emerges from behind the sun, observatories will measure its outbound speed and direction with exquisite precision. If the numbers match predictions, it will remain a scientific curiosity, destined for interstellar exile. If they don't, if even a subtle anomaly appears, then the debate will erupt anew. Regardless of which path reality takes, the episode exposes a profound truth about our species. We are still almost blind beyond our own orbit. The universe sends us visitors from other stars, and we meet them with a handful of telescopes and a patchwork of coordination. Whether natural or artificial, these encounters highlight both our curiosity and our vulnerability. For Avi Loeb and a small but growing group of researchers, 3i Atlas is less about one object than about a paradigm shift. It demands that we take seriously the possibility that interstellar technology may pass through our neighborhood, indifferent to our awareness. He argues that only by remaining open to that hypothesis, testing it with data, not prejudice, can we hope to recognize evidence when it truly arrives. And if, in the most dramatic reading, 3i Atlas were to reveal intent, if its path curved, its motion hinted at control, or if fragments deployed outward like seeds across the solar system, then humanity's first contact would not come in the form of a message, but a maneuver. In that moment, we would confront not only the question of who is out there, but how we choose to see ourselves. Would our first reaction be fear or inquiry? Would nations unite under a common scientific purpose or retreat into secrecy and defense? The truth, as always, would lie in the data, but the meaning, what it says about life, intelligence, and our place in the cosmos would depend entirely on us. Until those numbers come in, we watch and we wait. 3i Atlas sails outward from the sun, its tail, if it has one, fading against the star-filled black. Maybe it is only ice and dust. Maybe it is something built, ancient and enduring, following a plan written far away. Either way, it reminds us that the solar system is not a closed stage, but a crossing place. For a brief instant, a fragment from another world passed close enough for us to wonder. Whether it was a messenger of physics or of mind, the question itself marks the threshold of a new kind of astronomy, one that peers not just at stars, but at the possibilities between them. And so, 3i Atlas remains suspended between two fates, the harmless drift of a natural wanderer or the deliberate silence of something that knows exactly what it's doing. If we learn anything from this encounter, it may be that the universe has been speaking to us all along, in the language of motion, light, and chance, and we are only now learning how to listen.